guys, welcome back to the 12 days of foundation. If you didn't realize, we are now on day number 13. If you'd like to skip ahead directly to the review, I will have timestamps down below for uh, application, before and after, flash photo test, how it looks in natural light, how it looks at the end of the day. I'll be doing a full wear test as usual. Slight backstory to this one though. If you missed the first 12 days of my 12 days of foundation reviews, they will all be linked down below. But on the final day of filming, I attended an event for new Wet n' Wild launches for January 2020. At this event, I received a brand new foundation that is not out yet, and I was like, well, we've got a day number 13 on our hands. It is the Wet n' Wild Photo Focus Foundation Dewy, which is super exciting. I reviewed the original formula of this uh, whenever it launched, so that will be linked down below along with all of my other Wet n' Wild content. I love Wet n' Wild, so I've got lots of videos on them. So I figured today uh, I would do a wear test of the foundation along with some of the other new products that they've launched. I will, uh, once I've had a little bit more time to play around with the entire collection, they're gonna send that my way. I will do a more in-depth review but today I was like we got to play we got to test this out so but I still wanted to do a wear test and make it like a little bit more valuable than just kind of putting it on my face and giving you like my first initial thoughts so let's go ahead and get started so this foundation of course claims to be dewy it says it's hydrating and smoothing uh, it has a luminous finish with buildable coverage for normal to dry skin the original formula I would say I don't know if they said that that was matte uh, but it was definitely more on the at least natural matte side and did not claim to be dewy. So this is going to be the dewy, dewy counterpart. It's supposed to retail for about $8.49 Canadian, so it'll be less American. 20 different shades, and it should be launching wherever uh, Wet n Wild is sold. And like I said, in January 2020, but with any drugstore launch, it may show up a little earlier or a little later. You also have online options if you happen to know your shade. When I wore this back when I reviewed the other one, I was wearing Desert Bay. I think it was like the dead of winter and I had not seen the sun in a while so I was kind of my palest version of myself right now and definitely a more tanned version of myself so I grabbed two shades from the event I grabbed cocoa and hazelnut and I took a little video last night because I did test it out for a bit last night and I was wearing uh, kind of the lighter shade which is hazelnut on the left side of my face and the deeper shade cocoa on the right side of my face I feel like I could get away with either of these shades technically hazelnut is a little bit lighter so i think if you tend to be on the lighter side of what i generally am then that may be a good match but if you're kind of on the more tan side of me then cocoa would be a good match but nice to see that there are 20 shades in here and it looks to be quite light all the way up to quite deep which i really really appreciate because wet n wild remains to be one of the most affordable brands at the drugstore but also like they just keep launching amazing products so I'm gonna go ahead and use the shade uh, Coco today. They don't have any like actual claims about coverage. Like it says it's buildable, but it doesn't say like it's supposed to be full medium or anything like that. They did also launch or kind of relaunch a primer serum. So this is the Photo Focus Primer Serum Hydrating. This launched with their Rebel Rose collection, but at the event yesterday, they said um, that people were really into it and wanted it to become permanent, so it did. That's exciting. Uh, so this says it has uh, rose water, cam camellia leaf extract to nourish and moisturize the skin, uh, and it's supposed to help refine the skin for a flawless and longer lasting makeup application. So I just primed this half of my face, which is never what I do. I always prime this half of my face. I'm only gonna prime one half. Feels super lightweight, so even if you're oily, you may not want to put like something like this under a dewy foundation if you're oily, but if you're looking for something light, um, this definitely does feel quite nice and light. Similar to the other foundation, this comes with kind of like the paddle on it. I don't mind the paddle. I know some people didn't, didn't love that. I don't mind it. It's only right that I use one of my favorite foundation brushes. This brush really took me by surprise. Uh, it is also from Wet n Wild and it is their Rebel Rose Blush Brush, but I love it as a foundation brush. When I got it, I was like, oh, this looks stupid. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's just like a gimmick, you know? But it's actually an amazing foundation brush and it is still available on their website. Um, I guess you could use it for cream blush because there was a cream blush in that collection. Oh, also, in the last day of my 12 days of foundation, which will be linked down below, I am giving away a $100 gift card to Sephora, Ulta, or Shoppers Drug Mart of your choice so that you can buy a foundation of your choice instead of me choosing the prize or like buy whatever you want. <laughs> but as you can see, I think the shade match is quite good. Like it's a little bit warmer than my face, but it matches, it matches my body. 
Why don't I show you those swatches actually? That'd probably be helpful. So on the top here is hazelnut and on the bottom is cocoa. So you can see there's not only a, a, a difference in the actual um, depth of the color, but this one, I would say uh, cocoa is a little bit warmer and hazelnut has more beige in it. There are also some shades in between. Like I didn't have a ton of time to pick out my shade or anything. So this seems like it's the best match for me at the moment. I do think it might oxidize ever so slightly as well. I was just pausing to take my thumbnail picture <laughs> with like the stripes of the foundation on my face and I feel like it darkened ever so slightly, nothing too bad. I'm not gonna build up a ton of coverage. I have combo skin at the moment. So while my face is more agreeable for a dewy type of foundation, I still don't like to put too much on my face because that can cause me to get too oily. So I think you can see this is definitely on the warmer side of foundations than I tend to go, but with concealer and powder, it'll all come together. And like I said, I didn't have a ton of time to pick out my shades. So I will continue to test shades and update you in my kind of bigger Wet n Wild video if I do find a shade that I feel like is better, but like it does match my body. It's nothing uh, heinous or anything. Uh, and then there is like quite a bit of of uh, sheen to my skin but it is setting down like it doesn't feel super oily uh, I know a lot of people had issues with the scent of the first one I honestly did not notice I I don't know what it is like sometimes when I review pet foundations people are like you didn't talk about the scent I'm like I didn't notice like if I don't notice a scent I'm not going to say anything I'm not gonna like sniff it up close to see because what to, to, what's important to me is that when I'm applying it to my face or when I'm wearing it um, can I smell anything and I don't what I do notice about this one is it doesn't like because I specifically smelled it. It does have a scent, but I don't find it to be offensive. And once it's on my face, I don't notice it, which is what's the most important to me. So I'm going to go ahead and take some flash photos and then I'm going to put on my concealer and powder and I'll be back to show you a couple of new Wet n Wild items. Okay, so I applied concealer, powder, bronzer, mascara, brow gel, everything else that I'm wearing that's not mentioned in the video is always linked down below. I did use the new, um, Breakup Proof Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. Again, this is only my first time trying it, but I liked it. It says it's waterproof, cry proof, humidity proof, smudge proof, fade proof, flake proof, super, super black. Uh, and it went on really, really nicely. Now they've improved their blushes again. So these are the color icon blushes in one of their most iconic shades. Uh, what is it called? Sorry, I forgot. It's so iconic, but I forget the name. Mellow Wine. And I love this new packaging. It's so much more sleek. I love blushes, but I find drugstore blushes, while the formulas may be good, I felt like drugstore blushes were one of the places they were lacking the most in terms of formula and packaging. Like the packaging was just always so bulky. But this packaging looks nice and sleek. Uh, there's four different shades of these. Nudist Society, Pearlescent Pink, which I know is one that existed. Uh, this one, Mellow Wine and Pinch Me Pink. I think those are all existing shades, but it says the formula is improved along with um, the packaging. And uh, yeah, I feel like this formula, I feel like this is a little deeper than the original Mellow Wine. I might actually have the original. This looks to be completely matte as well, or maybe like uh, satin. No like glitter or shimmer in there. Up next, they've got some new kind of duo highlighters. These are the Hello Halo, oh sorry, blush lighters. So this is the one in the shade Highlight Bling. There's two other shades and I would say this is probably the shade that I would be the least interested in, uh, but this is what was in my gift bag. So I figured I would try it. It's just that it's, this is quite um, a cool tone. Maybe I'll put that on my inner corner actually. So I'm gonna take the lighter shade and just put it on my inner corner. And this is said to be the same formula as their highlighters, which are so good. Uh, but with two different shades to make it more versatile to do like strobing or blush topper, etc. Uh, I find these highlighters to be very, very glowy. So I don't know that I would use it as a blush topper. And then I'm going to take the more pink one and use that as my highlight today. But the other shades they have, there's one that's kind of more goldy and peachy. And then another one that's kind of more a little bit deeper again. One thing I would have liked to see is um, some deeper blushes. Ooh, that is very pretty because they've got deeper foundation, so I would love to see some blushes for people who would wear the deepest shades of the foundation. I feel like maybe you could wear like Mellow Wine, I'm not totally sure, but I would have loved to seen some shade extensions there. 
Uh, and this again is going to retail for uh, $8.49. If you have not tried their liquid highlighters, the Hello Halos, those are very good too. Take a look at them because some of them have like more glitter than others. Uh, but uh, yeah, I really like this duo. Wet n Wild is very well known for their lip products. I love their original matte lipsticks or are so good. Not were, they are so good. Um, but they've launched two new different lipsticks. So to my knowledge, they're not discontinuing the original ones, but I have not been told any information on what's staying and what's going. So this is the Mega Last Matte. Has a gorgeous little um, kiss on it there. And then they also have the Mega Last High Shine. So you have a matte formula and a shine formula. I will swatch all of these, but today I want to wear this because it's new and it's supposed to be long lasting. So I figured we would test it out. So this is the Mega Last Stained Glass, which I love that name for like a stained lip product. It says it's a lip gloss, but it says it's transfer proof, kiss proof, um, 10 hours wear, which I think is like a, a nice, like it's a, it's a lengthy amount of time, but it's not like, you know, it's going to last for 35 hours. Like claims like that are just stupid in my opinion. Uh, it comes in six different shades. I have this shade La Live, no, Love Blinding Glare. And it's a beautiful pink. So I figured we would wear this. And I swatched these on my hand yesterday at the event and then went to remove it and it stuck around. So we'll see how it goes on the lips. No scent, I don't think. There's a really pretty brown shade in this line too. So this is what the stain looks like. It says it's supposed to have like a vinyl like shine, but for me, I don't like my lip colors that are very deep to have a lot of shine to them. So I'm just gonna like kiss a piece of paper because I feel like that's also gonna help with longevity. And like, I know when I go to take a sip of my coffee, I'm just gonna get a bunch of that stain coming off. Even if the lip color stays around, then I'm just gonna get the stain on my glass. And bleh. so I like it to be kind of more in this but it feels really really comfortable also speaking of lip products they did launch two lip sleep sleeping lip masks which i think is exciting packaging is really cute kind of like um pop art kind of like pop art ish so they have the lip treatments the grapefruit mint and then this is the lavender i did wear this last night just the only time i wore it was last night but uh i felt really nice it wasn't like as thick as some of the other lip masks that are out there but when i woke up it was still on my lips which is like the most important thing when it comes to a lip mask for me is i want to actually feel it the next day uh, and feel like it really did actually hydrate and kind of stuck around on my lips so it did do that uh and i will of course continue to test this out along with all of these other products but as of right now i think things look really good i think the foundation i think you can see like i set my face with a matte powder obviously like i have the highlight there but things are still very shiny like in here and whatnot so i may end up needing to blot throughout the day but it does because there is some sheen to my skin looks really natural looks smooth on my skin and i do like uh the way that it looks as you can see like i've got a couple of breakouts here and i didn't work particularly hard to cover those up I, i'm not too bothered by that i like to have my natural skin shine through a little bit so i feel like i got like a nice medium coverage out of it i don't think you'd be able to build this up to like a super full so you could always spot conceal and things like that but yeah things look really good so far and uh, I will check back with you in some natural light in a few hours hello coming to you with my midday check-in here in some natural light so you can see uh, how everything looks in a little bit more of a real world situation uh, but I think things look really good I think you can see it is a um, a hint warm I guess but I still like the way that it looks it doesn't look like jarring in person like I have that big kind of line of you know here's foundation here's my my neck kind of thing definitely on the dewy side like I have that very bright highlighter um, but you can see around the sides of my nose and on my chin even on my forehead there's sheen but it doesn't feel heavy or uncomfortable it doesn't feel greasy I'm just gonna leave it and not blot like I don't feel uncomfortable and I, I don't really have like any issue with where it's at right now so I'll continue to wear it uh, I did just eat lunch and I did lose my lip so I'm gonna reapply because I feel like the way that I applied it this morning was more in like a lip gloss format over something like a stain. When I'm wearing a stain, I like to only put a tiny bit on and I feel like that's how it lasts the best. So that's how I'm gonna do it. So for me, for stains, I like to add just really light layers and kind of build it up. Not like just this product, like any stain in general. And it kind of has a texture somewhere in between a stain and a lip gloss. You know what, actually, I am gonna blot, hold on. Cause I feel like that's a little bit more realistic. Like if I was kind of looking shiny, like I am now, I would blot instead of just like pushing it to see what it looks like at the end of the day, you know what I mean? 
So I'm just gonna blot. I'm not gonna repowder or anything. Just like sides of my nose, upper lip, chin, forehead. And I find like this part of my nose gets shiny. So yeah, I think that that looks much better. Otherwise the cut coverage and everything still looks good. Br blush, bronzer, highlight, everything is still in place. Reapplied my lip, it's a super comfortable lip. Uh, and I feel like it pat, like, even though it, the coverage didn't really stick around, it didn't like look patchy or weird or leave a weird ring around my lip or anything like that. So I find like if a lip product is gonna disappear, I wanted to do it in a way that doesn't make me look stupid if I happen to not have a mirror or, you know, I'm looking at myself to touch up because uh, that is really annoying. So I'm gonna continue to wear this for a, a few more hours and I will check back with you tonight. Okay, so I am back and I am shiny. I've had this foundation on though for about 12 hours. So I feel like it held up well because I have combo oily skin and to me something getting oily is not a surprise I don't take away points for that what I judge it on is what it actually looks like when my oils inevitably start to come through does it get patchy does it feel greasy does it start to move around on my face are my blush bronzer highlights still in place and I gotta say on all of those notes I think it looks pretty good lost a little bit on my nose which is to be expected I feel like I've lost some coverage where I have some of these breakouts here, but nothing major. This is like some oil, but also highlighter is still there. I definitely can still see the blush too. Uh, so I think it looks pretty good considering it definitely got quite dewy, which is a good sign for those of you that have drier skin that wanted to test out a Wet n Wild foundation, but found the original formula was too matte for you. Um, this clearly seems like it could be a good option. Uh, if you have oily skin and you enjoy the original formula, I'd probably stick with that one. I honestly haven't worn the original formula in a while because the shade was quite fair, fair in comparison to where I am now. So I can't like directly compare this to that at the moment. But like I said, uh, I will do a more, talk about this more in depth in my other Wet n Wild video, but now that I've blotted, I'm gonna take just my powder brush. I think I used this earlier. There's no added powder on it, but just to kind of mattify slightly. I gotta say, I think things look good once I've done that, like it was an easy touch up, uh, if you don't mind doing that. And like I said, if you do have a, a drier skin type, that won't be really something that you need to worry about. But I think it looks quite good. Uh, the eyeliner is still definitely in place, still looks super black and sharp. I messed up on the lip product. I totally forgot. I've been like editing and emailing all day and I have like a million lip balms at my desk and periodically I'll just reapply lip balm, not even thinking about it. And I think I did that like two or three times this afternoon and then I realized like an hour ago, I was like, ah, oh, the lip product. You can still see it here a little bit. It was definitely holding on better than it was this morning when I put it on a little bit thicker, but I still feel like it was interesting because when I was at the event, like I put it on my hand, I swiped it with a, uh, a wet, like a makeup remover wipe almost immediately after and that stuck around on my hand all day. I felt like on my lips, the more product you put on, the less it stuck around. It was nice because you had a nice amount of moisture. You could still rub your lips together comfort comfortably, but because you had that comfort there, I felt like you didn't have as much stickiness and stick, not stickiness, but like sticking around power on the lips. But I still think it's an absolutely beautiful product. I'm curious to try out the other lipsticks that I mentioned. There's an orange, let's try it actually. I love orange lipstick and I'm wearing white, which I like to wear white with orange. Wet n Wild really protects their products, which is great. So nobody can get their grimy hands on it at the drugstore, but also so hard to open. So this is a Mega Last High Shine Brilliance lipstick in Tangerine The Alarm. Oh, that's cute. That's a really pretty orange shade, but like I said, I will review uh, and swatch all of these lipsticks upcoming. I still do want to play around with foundation shades a little bit to see if I can get an even better match. Like I thought this was a pretty good match. I think it could be a little bit better, especially with winter approaching. I'm going to continue to get a little bit more or lose some color, but I think it looks good. If you have oily skin, I would stick to the original, but if you have normal to dry skin, I think this could be a great option. And if you have combo skin, like myself, you know, you kind of got to play it by ear. I like both the formulas. It kind of depends, I guess, what I'm going for and what I'm looking for, but it's always nice to have great affordable drugstore options with a good shade range. Uh, and like I mentioned in the beginning, some drugstore products are really getting up there in price. And you know, Wet n Wild has increased slightly, but I feel like their quality has really increased and the products are still uh, substantially more affordable than those at the drugstore, especially if you live in the United States. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah. I'm pretty excited. I cannot wait to test out the rest of the line. Let me know what you think down below and what your favorite wet and wild product is. Uh, don't forget to enter my giveaway that will also be linked down below. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Samantha Jane YT. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.